Well, hey folks, welcome to the Wolf Den. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do an unbagging. An unbagging, not an unboxing. And I'm excited about this because you know I'm big into the slab spoons, the micro vertical jigs. I'm in all that. I love catching fish on it. I find it to be a new and exciting technique um, around here in the St. Johns River here in Jacksonville, Florida, also known as Bizarro World. It's a, it's a way of catching fish that's different. You know, you get stuck in doing the same old thing. Um, so I have been using all kinds of different vert uh, vertical jigs. Uh, just to give you a little, hold on here, just to give you a little, um, I don't know, example. Let me just show you, okay? Uh, let's see. Now here's one that's rigged up on one of my Ryoga and um, striper rods, okay? You know, I use a lot of these. See that little guy? I love that thing. Love it! All the things that are just like it. And you know, I mean, just, I'm going to go backwards here a little bit before I go forward. And you know, that's one of my swivels right there. It's an open eye. So you can attach that to about any lure and any open eye hook. And then what do I always say? If you want to do and just add a little bit to it, you take a little tiny, tiny, little just piece of uh, fish bites and put it on there. And you can vertical jig this. You can cast it. It's caught redfish. It's caught trout. It's caught yellowmouth. It's caught flounder. It catches blues, jacks, ladies. I haven't caught a pompano on it yet, though. It just catches everything. And you can catch those fish deep. Okay? So that's, okay, that's the... That's sort of the backup, and then or the uh, you know the prerequisite to what I'm going to show you here. But if you're always out looking, and I mean I'm always looking, um, you're out looking for something that's different, something that gives you a little edge, or something that's a little more versatile, or anything. Well, that's what this is in this bag. So let's open it up. Okay, let's open up here. This is a company that's from Washington State. I always have to say Washington State, like because that's where my boat's built. And if I say Washington, people go, Washington, D.C.? They build boats in Washington, D.C.? Please. Here's a catalog. And I mean, like, 99.9% .9 of everything that's in this catalog, I'm not interested in. <laughs> you know? I'm really not interested in. It's because it's a lot of salmon fishing type stuff. To give you an example, um, here it is right in the beginning. Trout and kokanee lures of all time. Wedding ring spinners. But what we're talking here is max lures, okay? And they had something that I found, not on eBay. You know, I'm an eBayer. I'm a monster eBayer. And I usually find everything on eBay. Well, instead, this time, I was watching YouTube. And I came across an older fella who was talking about vertical jigging. That's, that's this. I've taken these right here at the jetties and vertical jigged them and caught 30 plus inch redfish. My ears went, boink, 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 boink. I, I mean, I perked right up there now. And this is exactly what they make. 
This is the Max Sonic bait fish. You're, you're seeing it for the first time. I've only seen pictures. Okay. This is a half ounce. Now, I'm thinking me and Mac here could have a very good relationship. And that's what I'm hoping for. What that looks like is a chrome. That's chrome. It's got a Duloc snap right there. Which I've never really trusted these from Monster Fish. Okay. It's got the Duloc snap. A treble. And that treble isn't even on a split ring. And that thing looks almost identical. Well, not identical, but let's see if I got one in here. Another lure that come from up that way. Here's the crippled herring. So I'd say that's very much like the crippled herring. Because you know what? All oh, lures ain't nothing but a tweak of somebody else's design. Okay? I mean... There's nothing that hasn't been thought of already. But, look at the difference. Now, of course, this is a one ounce. This is a half ounce. Okay, what do you see that's different? Well, right off the get-go, it has an eye right here. It has an eye right there. And that is what made me so excited. Supposedly, you can take... Let's do lock snap. Now, I probably won't be using these because I won't trust that when I hitch into a 40-pound redfish or something because it does happen. But you can put the snap on, and now you got that, and it's weighted, weighted just like that. All right. Now, what's the difference? This thing will flutter all over the place. All right, but you want to change up presentation. You tie it off to center, and now you got a vibrate lure. You pull it up, and it vibrates, and you let it go down, and it vibrates down. If you just have it, let's say, attached up here, which I do with, say, this jig, okay, all it really does then is it goes, well, when you attach it to here, it's a vibrate lure. It falls like this. Actually, it falls probably hunting, you know, as it falls. And you pick it up, and it vibrates up. Okay. So, that is the big deal with the Max Sonic Baitfish. That's the big deal. And that was that's what made me so excited. That's that. Just a just a new vertical spoon. Vertical jig. Versatility. Oh, oh, that's what I want to mention. Patrick Sabeel. You may not know who he is, you may not care who he is, or whatever, but he's a Frenchman that worked for MEPS or something. MEPS spinners. You know, he broke out on his own as a lure designer and he came out with all kinds of stuff i mean he's got all kinds of he's got a bunch of crazy stuff lures and stuff i think he was backed by pure fishing all right meaning pure fishing meaning not necessarily berkeley not necessarily Penn, not necessarily shakespeare not this but he was added in as one of their companies, I guess you could call, Sabeel Lures. Well, Patrick Sabeel makes this exact same thing. Exactly. He's got a spoon that has attachment points on each end and one right in the center. And he calls it the vibrato. And the vibrato usually is in a one or two pack for about 20 bucks. Now granted, his many times are a lot heavier. You can get three, four, five ounce ones 
Okay, but I mean they're expensive. They're they're high dollar. Even on a place like eBay where you're trying to get, you know, the best deal you can. I'm into more of the micro versions of things. That's what this That's a butterfly jig. Look. That's nothing more than the same thing as a Shimano Butterfly Colt Sniper type jig, except miniaturized. And then I put my own swinging hook on it. Well, this is a miniaturized version of something like what Patrick Sabeel makes, except it's not $25 or whatever. All right, so that's, again, there's nothing super new out there. It's just changes, you know, to an existing uh, idea. And what that idea means to you is, you know, why you might be interested in it. So that's that's the reason I did this. That's the reason I got them. I'm going to try them out. I'm kind of really excited to try these out. All right. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll... Uh, See a little, little uh, action on the old um, Max Sonic Baitfish here coming up real soon. Things ought to get better as spring starts rolling in, folks. Water starts warming up, more baitfish start coming in, and the more something like this becomes even a little more appealing. They really do good in the spring. They don't do all that great vertical fishing, vertical uh, spoon, vertical jigging inshore in the winter time a little bit but not that great all right thanks i'll see you on the water all righty folks guess what part two part two of max sonic bait fish and i didn't know really how i was going to rig it and I didn't know really what I wanted to do with it, to tell you the truth, as far as hook placement and things like that. But, you know, for me, everything rolls around or revolves around my open eye swivel and the versatility that it produces with so many things, like spinners, spoons, and, and stuff like that. So here's what I came up with, and you may want to try it too. The differences between me and a lot of other people is I've got boxes of hooks, literally boxes of different style hooks. So I do a lot of experimentation. Okay. Here's what I came up with. i am got an open eye swivel clipped to the center of the Max Sonic Baitfish. Right. And then what I went with is I opened up the eye of a little short shank must add needle point hook. That baby is razor, razor sharp. That's what I do. I, I buy hooks. Various sizes and stuff. You know, 50 of these, 25 of these, 100 of these, 500 of these. And I save them and they come in all kinds of handy for different purposes. Right? So I got the hook there. You can see I tied off there with a small loop knot. All right, and that now gives me where I can tie it off in the center and hopefully get a great fluttering action and this hook swinging, all right, because I love a swinging hook. And um, then if I don't want to fish it this way, I just come in here, cut the, cut the mono, all right. If I don't want to fish it that way, and I can tie it off to the top now, and I've got a mid-body swinging hook. Everything is to be extremely versatile. A lot of baits and things, they want to kind of, I mean, even the way this is set up, they had the treble on the end. All right. Man, I'll tell you, around here, <laughs> Even croakers, croakers, that hook doesn't have to be tight to this. They come in and they just eat the whole thing. So that swinging hook now makes it so I can 
tie off here, hopefully. And what I'd do is I would just take the hook and lay it to one side with the swivel. And I'd come in on the other side and tie it. And hopefully I'm going to get that, that kind of fluttering action straight down. And then the buzzing on the way up. But then, if I don't want to do that, I can cut it off and I can tie a loop knot to here. I trust a loop knot and say 20 or 30 pound test mono leader a whole lot more than a little snap or something like that. I'm not into I'm not into pieces and parts. I want to be able to take something, put it together like this and go with it. So now I could tie it up here if I wanted. All right. And I'm back to having sort of the same presentation as this one with a swing and hook, except this one's coming off the top of the bait and this one's just coming off the middle of the bait. So there you go. Versatility. Versatility. That's the reason why I bought these in the first place. I wanted to see. Now, I want to see how good it's going to how good it's going to act with that hook right there in the center swinging and me just tied off with a loop knot right there. I want it to go and then buzz up and then then do its little thing going down. You got to remember too. Uh, we're not always fishing. I mean, if you're taking the same idea and you're over someplace where there isn't a whole lot of current, but we're having the fishing current because if the fish if there is no current, the fish don't bite. So I'm doing that with all of them. Here's the uh, three quarter ounce glow sartreuse, and then there's the the uh, the chrome. The chrome has a little bit of black stripage on there. So there you go. There's just a little follow up. That's how I'm going to rig these to start off with. And uh, oh, the dryer's buzzing, so my clothes must be dry. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's just a follow-up. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you ever if you ever come up with something like these or an idea or anything. Hey, let me know. Make a video. Let's see what your ideas are. Alright, thanks for watching.